All right, you're welcome back. So this is Before You Say I Do. And like I said, our topic for today is still money in the home, but this time allocation of finances. And we are going to be speaking to Miriam Marco Emisa, Head of Client Experience at Stanbic Investment Management Services. Hi, Miriam. Hi. It's good. always nice to see you here. Nice to have you again. Just yesterday that you came, you know, I took a lot of notes, a lot of notes, and I think I'm going to be practicing them. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to be talking about allocation and finances. And usually when people enter marriages, um, it becomes new to them, like, oh, there are so many bills that we need to pay and all of that. But how can a couple actually handle finances when it comes to the household, especially? Hmm. So I, I would start by saying that there's no one size that fits all. And try not to copy mm -hmm. and paste as well. Start from having a, a friendly, honest discussion right. about what you think and how you think money should be split in the home. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, there's no couple like the two of you. Because okay. there's no man like the one you have with the specific context in right. which they grew up. Mm -hmm. And there's no woman like you in that specific context that have come together. So you need to create one for yourself. Right. It doesn't stop you from looking at what others have done or what you have experienced mm -hmm. growing up to also take a cue from that. I think yesterday I mentioned that there are people who have seen their parents, their father handle about everything. And so that's the expectation mm -hmm. until they get into the marriage and realize that, okay, it doesn't always happen Work like, that. Mm -hmm. like that. So um, in terms of splitting who should handle what, you can come to an agreement. I think I mentioned again yesterday that a couple decided that the man handles everything at home yeah. and the woman's salary is for investment. For investment. Mm -hmm. You can also choose that. I know a couple also that takes the various kids or the children. Um, so one, they have two kids. Mm. One takes the one of them. The other takes yeah. the other one in terms of their schooling. School fees, yeah. So everything that concerns this particular child, I bear the cost. Mm. Everything that concerns, I believe that works for you. I don't know how that will work for me. But if that works yes. for you, you can mm -hmm. work with that. You can also have a three account where there's the personal account for each of you that you have to spend on. Then there's the shared account and then the shared savings. So you have one that is for shared expenses, mm -hmm. sorry. So we, we decide that for the various expenses and that's where the budgeting comes in. We list all the things that we have to spend. And remember, on a budget, there's income and there's expenditure. Right. So you have to acknowledge and recognize all your income streams. I'm not talking about salary. So salary is what you probably end consistently at the end of the month. But if you have a side business, you need to acknowledge it. If you have an investment that earns returns, every six months you are getting some Something, coupon payment. Yeah. You need to acknowledge that as well and work it into your expenditure. Right. So once you are able to list all of them, then you can decide that, okay, this person takes care of that. We both pay to sort these ones out. Mm -hmm. So school fees, it's, it's a shared responsibility. Yeah. So we, we open an, a joint savings account, for instance, to put in money every month. For rent, for instance, we don't own a house. Let's put something together at the end of every month that every two years we know that we have to pay out something. It's a shared responsibility. We have an account for that. You can have a joint account for as many things as you right, want to. Right. And I'll come into the investment options when it comes into that. But like I started with, there's no one size that fits everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember, you're two unique individuals and you coming together, there's no pair like you. Mm -hmm. So you have to create your own. So do what works for you. Have the honest conversation. This, that. I didn't grow up like this. I mean, when I was growing up, this is how it was. So how can we come or meet at a point? Because this is how I've had it 
all oh along. Yeah. And and I think you you we were having a discussion earlier. You mentioned someone that was coming from a background where I mean you need to account for everything. everything. Yeah. And I hope my dad watches this because we needed to account for every sheet everything. of paper yeah. that we took it in our SIS book. So when you're coming to change your SIS book, they need to give you a new one. They're checking mm. the number of pages. If you tore anything anything out of it. So I grew up being accountable for things and into my in my marriage i'm the one that is accounted for every cd mm. that goes out so if you if you are not comfortable with that we need to talk about it that then let's make room for miscellaneous where the spenders can also feel free <laughs> <laughs> and spend so when it comes to the responsibility and what we are handling at home start with the honest conversation and what our money philosophies are yeah and let's let's build our own charts from there right, right. you know th uh, when the issue of children coming a lot of people do not actually plan for you know them because they believe that l like you said last time in our head we always think oh it's going to be better we never think about what if this goes negatively we always think believe it's going to be better a year, 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 year. you understand but now um how important is it for us to us as you know people who want to probably get married or as a couple want to get married someday plan um about the children's education do you think it's best to start before the kids come or when the kids come i like that you say when the kids come mm -hmm. Because let's again start from the foundation that kids are a gift from yes. God. Mm -hmm. And it's not every marriage that would have kids. kids yeah. Some would, and some may even take the personal decision to adopt. Yeah. Whichever it is, again, it starts from that discussion that this is what we want to do. If you want to have kids, I mean, the desire and the hope for both of you. I, I remember in my account, my premarital counseling, the pastor asked how many kids we wanted to have. That is what everybody expects. So we stated how many we want to have. Now that's a hope. So you can start planning towards that. I know people who, when they immediately take seed, they open an account mm, for the child yeah, and start yeah. depositing money in there for. Now, children come in with so many expenses different kinds so there's health there's school fees school fees is just um let's say 20 percent of the expenditure that comes with them that's what they have to eat and guess what if you have a picky child you'll be trying all sorts of everything. things <laughs> everything and then there's the clothes and then there's the health that you need to take care of so there's, there's so much that comes along, so much responsibility that comes along with the children. So it's, it's okay if you decide to open a school fees account or something, but generally you can just decide that once you take seed, um, once the child is born, some people start when at the naming ceremony, mm -hmm. they give gifts and yeah, they use yeah, that as a to seed start, yeah. to start the, the account for them. And then you can start building it up. As the children grow, you can have a conversation about the kind of schools you want them to attend. And if that is it, then you start asking about how much that costs. How much is it today to take a child to maybe an SOS, um, a, 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 a government school mm -hmm. in, your, in, your, in your locality, or a GIS? They're different. Some people are doing IB and all of that. So where do you desire to have your kids? It's always that parents want to, their kids to do better than them. So you'd always want to aspire better. That informs you about how much you need to start with now and then build it up. Right, right. All right, I, this conversation is really, you know, interesting. But we'll take a quick break and then we will come back after the break.
All right, welcome to Before You Say I Do. And we are still having the conversation on allocation of finances, especially um, when it comes to money in the home. And now, let's get into investments. Mm. What sort of investments should people who want to get married look out for? First of all, should they even be investing? <laughs> they should be investing why is it important for them to be investing because most of the future goals that you have is not money that you're spending today okay, oh, okay. and if you're putting the money aside that is savings mm -hmm. but when you are investing the money you're making the money work for you so you're sort of hedging it against inflation mm -hmm. and inflation just simply means the ability to buy or your purchasing power if I can buy bread today at 10 CDs, it's even 20 CDs yeah. these days mm -hmm. for a loaf. If I can buy it at 20 CDs, when my child is, as you mean she's three years now and she's 10 years, I will not buy it at the same but 20. Yeah, so if yeah, I'm putting yeah. money down and it's only being saved and nothing is being added on or it's not working to get me anything, then really i'm not doing anything mm. so i'll need much more in the future to add on for whatever it is that i need to do so it's important that you don't just save the money but you invest it mm -hmm. as well so um what what kind of investments should i look at so i wouldn't say that there's an investment for couples but there's an investment for every investment mm -hmm. objective okay. or goal so depending on what the goal is for the couple when they come in, they will find a solution or something that they can do. I'll st I'll, I, I think I mentioned earlier on that they can also budget based on short term, uh, medium yeah. term, mm -hmm. and long term. So what are some of the short term goals? Um, if they want to invest or put money aside, for instance, they've just started and they got a new home. They rented an apartment. Yeah. It's not um, a fully furnished one, so they will need to start buying a couch, um, utensils, and all those things. They don't, they don't want to buy just anything, so they want to put money together, for instance, and take it out maybe after a year to fully furnish the home. They can start putting it into an investment that will generate something for them. When it comes to that, there are short-term investments available that they can do. I don't know if you want me to go into that yeah, now. Just, just a bit, yeah. So you can do, we typically call them money market securities, and their, their period is one year and below. Yeah. So you have a three-month treasury bill, you have a six-month, you can do a fixed deposit, and then you can do a collective investment. Um, I'm always a fan of collective investments because it allows you to put in as and when you want to and you can take out also at any point in time so for me those are some of the options that you can consider again when it comes to the medium term goal so maybe after marriage three years into the the marriage we want to start a family maybe we are young now we don't want to start immediately so three years into the family we have about one or two kids what are their needs going to be what should we be putting aside Diapers these days are very expensive, expensive and yeah. it's sad that when you use it, you have to throw it you out. Have to it. <laughs> so you have to start planning. So we can start, op we can open an investment account to do something like that as well. And then we can look at the future. Maybe want to buy a home. We want to start talking about retirement yeah. now. Where should we look at? Their bonds, their other real estate collective investment schemes that are available that you can look at. Now new in the in the system is also the actual traded funds, ETFs, mm. that you, you have available. If you are very aggressive, you can go into the equity space as well. That's also picking up. Typically, those ones give you like a 10-year yeah. plan that mm -hmm. you're working towards that you can do. So there are no couple investments, but they are investment for couple goals right yeah so um personal development finances are actually crucial to um growth and success so how can one invest in themselves when it comes to their personal um financial um, um growth it depends on how much you have <laughs> and what you want to do 
but I'll start from the very basic. Don't make it too um, difficult for yourself. Just start by being inquisitive mm -hmm. and asking questions. So what I do, put, I put a system in place. These days, so many things take our attention. And when you start scrolling, mm -hmm. you keep scrolling and it's and two hours scrolling. and exactly. it's three hours. So find um, ways that you can get information about finances. Now, when that you, 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 you develop the interest in understanding these finances, then you will start finding things that actually add to your knowledge. So you, there are various podcasts. If you use an iPhone, yeah. you can find podcasts that talk about money that talk about savings, that talk about investment. Just true, listen to it. True. Sometimes they will use jargons that ah, you don't know what it is, and they're using bullish and bearish. That's one of my very favorite jargons in finances, <laughs> a bullish market and a bearish market. But ignore them. And, and even if you hear that, it gives you the platform to start a conversation with someone that understands finances so they always say that you you need to keep people as friends always have a financial person within mm -hmm, your group mm -hmm. of friends that you can go to and that's uh, they were saying that treasury bills uh, the rates are dropping what does that what mean what does that mean exactly or you can have your banker tell you about these things now if you want to go deeper into it unless it's a career passion that you want to follow then you want to maybe um, invest in education, formal education. Mm -hmm. Other than that, really, it's just being curious, signing on to one podcast, Economist, um, CNN, all these channels will give you information that bring um, finance closer to you. Right. So what are some signs that a couple might need um, financial um, assistance or basically financial counseling? The first sign is when it's difficult to even bring up the subject of finances. <laughs> okay because it's not an easy one mm -hmm. if if it's difficult it's a touchy subject then it means that you need some advice or some counseling on how to have those conversations um when one also feels like one is not being transparent and therefore they start doing things separately then means they have to start or they need some counseling when it comes to finances. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, you cannot do anything without money. And once you're doing it together, like I, I, I mentioned earlier, two are always better than one mm -hmm. because there is a good and a better return for their hard work, for their labor. So if you're not doing it together, then it means a lot of projects and future goals that you aspire to have are being put in the back end. And it's only the personal goals that are being worked on. So then eventually people start feeling like I'm being cheated out of this relationship. I need to think about myself. Then that's where all the self-care starts. And then they start putting money into themselves when it should be about growing each other, when it should be about helping and supporting each other get there. So when you get to that point where talking about money is, is like, it always ends in a fight, or even starting the conversation is a problem, or one person feels like, I cannot trust you with money, then it's time that you have that honest discussion. Mm. So what are some of the financial mistakes that couples make? Assumptions. Okay. <laughs> I think the first one is assumptions, that we think that everyone is like us, mm -hmm. and everyone thinks about money the way we do, and everyone uses money like, like the we way do. we do. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's the first mistake, that we assume that these things are supposed to be and it's like what we should always remember that you are coming from a different background, background context you grew up in a different home and they also did the same so don't assume that the way they spend money is wrong mm. or it's not the right way that is what they have grown up with for the past 30 or 
20 years yeah. that they were not with you. Mm -hmm. And so that is their default. That is what they have accepted. It doesn't mean that it's wrong. It doesn't mean that it's the worst way of doing things. And don't also think that yours is the best right. way. Be ready to learn what they have because then there are always strengths in what the other person right. brings yeah. on board. So the first mistake I would say, and, and, and a big mistake is, is that we assume that everyone should see finances or their philosophy about finances or money should be like yeah. ours yeah. and and then then the other one also is that we assume that money should take care of itself or things would take care of it it, it normally doesn't someone has to own it mm -hmm. and so if no one is owning it then it becomes an issue so if you're the one that is more concerned than own it in the relationship like i always say and that's why they say that um, unlike pools that attract, you always yes. find something in that person that you don't have and that draws you to that person. Interestingly, when you get into the marriage, it becomes one thing you abhor because then it's not like... Yes, what you know. Yeah. Yes, what you know. So always remind yourself that they come with, on with a certain strength. If one partner is more keen on finances, allow them to own it and handle it. Right. I think those are the two that I'll right. share. Okay, so lastly, before I let you go, um, you know, um, having these conversations are very um, crucial and sometimes can be, um, you know, have a lot of, a little bit of friction before we have this conversation. So what are some of the strategies you used, you, to have this conversation in the beginning? Uh, what strategies did I use? Did you do the money date? Um, some of the times, right. unfortunately, sometimes when you get there, you actually don't even discuss mm -hmm, the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that, that's probably one mistake, an assumption that I also made that going on that date, I'm going to talk about money, but I don't give advance notice. Mm. So you don't tell the person, but you are thinking and scheming in the background. When I go, that's what I'm that's going what to do. do. And the person doesn't want to talk about the money. So you, you, you. What, what I would do is, is that I know that this is important. And when I don't talk about it, it gives stress yes. for me. Mm -hmm. So then I would let you know that I want us to talk about, about it. About this, yeah. Um, like I said, in my marriage, we're different. So I am the one that is keen on it for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. I'm in that career. <laughs> yes, yes, obviously. So I would do the budgeting. I would account for every CD. And then I'll let him know, okay, we are going off, let's come back, and all of that. Um, if it's not working and he doesn't want to talk about it at that point, I lay off and wait to a better time. There's always a good time that um, the atmosphere at home is, is, is just joyous, it's loving, it's peaceful, and you want to slip it in. And, and depending on who your partner is, know who your partner is, basically and the times that they want to talk about these things. Mine will want to be given notice that, oh, I want to talk to you, and it's going to be about the money yeah, or something. Mm -hmm. So let's have a discussion when you're available. So those are some of the strategies. You can do the money date. You can inform them. You can also own it and then put it together. Depending on who your partner is, some people are visual, so they want to see. If you are talking the figures, they don't understand, they don't understand mm -hmm. it. So do something that they want to see, that they want to add up, and it makes sense to them. Like I said, it's not an easy conversation. But if you are the one who is keen on it in your marriage, own it and, and run with it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you so much, Miriam Maku Emisa, Head of Client Experience at the Stambic Investment Management Services. Um, and we've been speaking on money in the home, allocation of finances. So how can people reach out to you? Or how can people come for any advice? Advice. Okay. So... I work with Stambic Investment Management Services and we do investment advisory. So you can come to us on the fourth floor of the Stambic Heights building or walk into any Stambic bank branch 
and you would receive some information or oh. advice on it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, viewers, for sticking with us. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Before You Say I Do, because I did. Anyway, it's time for us to go now. Um, until next time, bye. Thank you.